Hi everyone and welcome back to Sandy's Side Hustle. Today's video is five ideas on how you can make money from home for stay-at-home moms. All five of these ideas are side hustles that you can start with little to no money up front. Let's get into it. All five of these ideas I have personally either tried myself or I know someone close to me who has tried them. Um, so it's not just like some random list that I've pulled from the internet and that I'm spewing at you. I have personal experience with all of them. And my first idea is a job that does not actually involve working in the home, but it's working outside of the home where you can take your kids with you. And that is getting a job at a gym daycare. So I have done this in two different gyms. Both gyms allowed me to bring my children to work with me and both were very um, understanding that my children came first. Therefore, my schedule was strict. I could work what I could and I couldn't what I couldn't. And um, they were in every environment. They have been very family friendly. So basically, um, the reason I suggest working at a gym daycare versus working at a traditional daycare is because number one, the gym daycares usually pay, pay pretty close in pay as what your traditional like Head Start or pre-K program would. And it's a whole lot less um, structure and responsibility. So in gym daycares, your goal is basically to keep the children alive for an hour or two where just so like the parents can get their workout in and relax. If you're working in a traditional Head Start or preschool, you're writing curriculum, you're feeding lunch, you're changing diapers, you're doing naps, you're doing all of that stuff for the same amount of pay. And most of the time, it is a very structured, like 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Like it's not flexible. It's you, You're no longer a stay-at-home mom at that point. So when you work at a gym daycare, it is a legit side hustle for women, for moms. I've worked in one daycare where we didn't change diapers and one where we did. Um, obviously, like keeping children alive is a very big responsibility, but essentially I get paid um, to play with my children because they're there with me. And if you work in a traditional daycare, then they are, you're typically separated by age. So my kids are two different ages and they're both in the same room with me. And that's another reason that that is a great opportunity. I guarantee you that you have a gym in your area that has a daycare and gyms are always hiring. Always. Um, I live in a very rural small town and we have like six gyms with daycare. So I can almost bet you've got one. So that is my first tip is a gym daycare. Check it out. Now the rest of these ideas are all ideas that you are like you are your own. You're not working for a company. You are your own boss. So if that's what you're looking for, here they are. Number two is teaching English as a foreign language to children in China. Um, you've probably heard about this before, maybe, maybe not, um, but there are two options, there are two ways to do this, and that is VIP kids, and that is Q kids. Now, with Q kids, you do have a little bit of a cost up front because you now have to trade, pay for a training program that you did not have to do in the past, but from what I hear, it's worth it as long as your schedule is open to when the Chinese children are out of school because their schedule their hours, their day, and their time of year is opposite. So if you start working for VIP kids today in the United States or in Canada where it's winter, the kids in China are on summer break and there's not as many kids um, needing tutoring at the moment. But if you start when we are in the summertime, then you have more opportunity um, to get new clients because there's more people signing up to the program. And then the other thing is, is you have to think like a parent. So Parents can request specific teachers. So if they like you or their child is learning from them, then they're going to request you again. So that's something that you have to keep in mind because in the very beginning, you need to be open and available so you can get that recurring clientele. Um, that is a, you can make up to like $25 an hour doing that. Um, and but you just have to work like at odd times of the day because China's schedule is opposite of ours. Um, with VIP kids, you do not have to pay that cost up front, but with both programs, you do have to have, you do have to buy a headset. And then both companies do require you to have a bachelor's degree in order to, um, to be hired on, uh, but it doesn't matter what bachelor's degree that you're in. And I have heard wonderful things from everyone I know who have worked for VIP or Q kids. VIP and Q kids is not something I have personally tried because number one, I don't think I have the patience to do it. And number two, it pretty much requires getting up at 5 a.m. and I'm not very good at waking up in the morning. So I don't wanna no show up for a job. <laughs> number three <laughs> is working for Shipped or Uber Eats. Now with both of these companies, you will be a freelance employee. So you are your own boss. Um, but basically Uber Eats works just like Uber, but they 
deliver food and ship they shipped they you order your groceries and then you take them to their door so this isn't necessarily something you could do with your children with you depending on where you live um you can because it will require you getting out of the car and walking up to a door and delivering your food so depending on where your children are at in their lives it may or may not be something you can do with them in tow um, but I have heard wonderful things about working for Uber Eats um, shipped has been kind of hit or miss so I've not personally worked worked for shipped but um, they did at one point have a lawsuit about not paying their employees on time if I can find any information on that I will link it down below for both of those there is an application process and for both of those companies you can you get paid like an hourly rate that the company pays you and then you can get made tips so I, so I've heard is I've heard of people making as much as $25 in one delivery for shipped um, the reason I have not tried these personally is because we live in a very rural area and I just won't have to drive all the way to the grocery store drive all the way back to town to deliver food I mean I could be you could easily put 50 miles on your car delivering groceries to somebody and that's just not something you want to do the other downside to that is you do have to pay for your own gas and you are putting mileage on your car but if you are running it like a business you should be able to deduct that from your taxes I am not a tax expert but and the last two items I want to talk about are things that I have been doing for 10 years plus um, the number one it thing is buying and selling on Facebook marketplace so I actually started buying and reselling merchandise in high school on eBay um, when eBay was like a cool thing to do there is still a market on eBay it's just not something that I like working with anymore um, just because I don't always want to deal with the shipping for like bulkier items but I do sell on Facebook pretty regularly in fact that's usually how I like pay for my kids Easter baskets or um, get a little extra for Christmas or if there's something special I want to do that's usually how I do it um, so basically you go into a thrift store you go to yard sales you find stuff around your house um, people give you things like anything and everything and you sell it on Facebook marketplace um, in my local neighborhood subdivision we actually have like a porch pickup program where you list it and then you say porch pickup only and basically like you set it out on your porch and then the person comes and picks it up and leaves the money under your mat um, that's a great way to do it if you're comfortable with that um, otherwise you just meet people in a safe location and pass them off um, eBay takes that little bit of danger out of that because you're shipping items um, my mom currently is still making a full-time income selling on eBay and she has been since eBay like became a thing um, so that is a great option it's just a matter of learning your brands learning what sells in your area and just learning your market and kind of watching the trends and finding good items that are um, that are hard to find secondhand that are in good condition if you would like to see an entire video on tips and tricks on how to do that um, let me know and I'd be happy to make one for you um, and along with this I do want to mention Poshmark um, I do not personally sell on Poshmark I never have but I do have a friend who started selling her own clothes on Posh Poshmark by cleaning out her closet and when she ran out of stuff she had a friend say hey I have a bag of stuff you can sell if you want to list it for me like I'll give you a cut so now basically what she does is she gets Poshmark stuff from anyone and everyone that wants to give it to her and then she lists it on Poshmark sells it and then she gets 20% and they get the rest um, and that's something to think about too if you know someone who has a lot of good things that they want to list but they're just not comfortable with the internet or don't have the time or energy to do it she is basically running a part-time business selling for other people on Poshmark so that is a great op option she herself is a stay-at-home mom and just once her kids go to bed she takes the pictures post it and then um, because Poshmark just automatically sends you the shipping label she prints them out sets them on her porch and that's that's all she has to do with it and the fifth idea I have for you today is my absolute favorite and that is making crafts to sell so this is something I've also been doing for years um, I have dabbled in Etsy but I mostly sell on Facebook marketplace and I now have my own storefront in a local craft store and then we occasionally go to craft festivals so I have been crafting my entire life um, and people say to me all the time I wish I could make that stuff I can never do it blah 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 the truth is it is not hard as long as you find something that you enjoy making so that is something I intend to pursue on this channel is um, giving you guys different crafts that are super simple super easy but specifically made for you to sell um, that I believe that there's a market for or a potential for you to sell um, I sell the majority of my stuff on Facebook marketplace um, and it's 
it's super easy. Uh, I sell everything from craft projects like dresses, children's clothes, things like that. Um, I have a cameo, so I sell like personalized items, personalized cups. We live in a tourist area, so things that have my city's name on it. Um, I sell things like handmade crayons, um, candles, scrunchies, like all kinds of super simple things and people just get excited about it. And I had a light bulb moment the other day when I was selling one. I had a lady right before Christmas, um, she purchased $90 worth of one specific item. And I, it wasn't an item that I expected to sell a ton of. It was something I just kind of made and was like, hey, that's an idea. And then it just took off like we've been selling them left and right and when I took them to this lady I was like I almost felt guilty taking her money I was like I like why why would you want these and she when she walked up to me to give me her money she said to me no mind you this woman owns her own crafting store she, she owned her own like felt making store and I walked into her store to give her this box of stuff that she was buying me and I was thinking to myself this woman definitely knows how to craft she knows how easy this was for me to make there was there was no doubt in my mind that she didn't and I thought why on earth is she paying ten dollars for this item that she knew just that didn't take me too long to make or that wasn't too difficult to make and she handed me the money and she said I am so excited these are Christmas gifts for my friends and I love buying stuff that I don't feel like making and I was like ding 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 it had nothing to do with that she wasn't capable or that she doesn't didn't um, it had nothing to do with the fact that she wasn't capable or the fact that she couldn't because she could. It was the fact that she didn't want to. And I was like, whoa, like mind blown. And then that was when I got the idea for this video because I thought there are other moms who can use this, right? Because I'm only selling to people near me. And as much as I would like to sell to people all over the world, that's just not in my grasp right now as a stay-at-home mom working out of my kitchen. Um, so I want to pass the information to you in maybe Tulsa, Oklahoma, or Houston, Texas, or New England, or wherever. So you can sell the local people in your area who just don't want to do it to themselves either. So sorry, I might have gotten off on a little tangent. Um, so that's all that I have for this video today. Um, I hope you found it inspiring. Sandy's Side Hustle is a new channel for me and I am super excited to share this with you. I am so passionate about business and I am so passionate about money and I am incredibly passionate about making it so moms can, can, can continue to be stay at home moms and enjoy their time with their little ones while bringing in a little income or a lot of income this entire channel will be videos on how to make money from home, side hustles for women, how to make money um, with your kids in tow, and videos on how to make money as a stay-at-home mom because that is something I am super passionate about sharing with you all. If you are a small YouTuber and you have stumbled across this video, I highly recommend check checking out Andrea Jean Mompreneur. She is the woman who gave me the motivation to step away from what I was doing on YouTube before and start this channel. An idea that has been bobbling around in my head for like the last three years since my son was born. Um, and I am just so excited and I'm so happy to be here sharing this information with you today. So if you are a content great creator, she is doing some wonderful things on how to read your analytics how to tag your videos and just how to how to do the YouTube thing and how to build your brand. So be sure to check her out. And the last thing I want to mention is if you are interested in this content, please hit the subscribe button down below to be sure be sh to be sure to catch all my upcoming videos. Thank you so much for checking out my first one and I'll catch you next time. Bye.